put her down right there. Good evening, guys. I have the honor of being our last speaker, so I'll make this quick. Um, my talk, drones, how I learned to stop worrying and love my autonomous overlords. Um, I'm a firm believer that all journeys worth taking start with a problem. And in 2011, Texas had a big problem. Most of our state was on fire. Um, the fires raged, it was quite deadly. Million, actually, I think it was billions in dollars of property damage was made. Um, and unfortunately, some lives were lost. The fires were so bad, you could actually see them from space, burning across. Um, top left corner right next to that cloud is actually Dallas. So me being a young engineer, I'm thinking, ah, oh, I can solve this. Um, all of, we, we, we have this problem. All of these firefighters didn't have the information they needed to get out of the way of these fires. Constantly, huge amounts of manpower were needed just to fight little brush fires because they could change. A brush fire can travel 40 miles per hour in good winds. So I got to work. Cue the music. <laughs> this is where I started. This is my first, quote unquote, RC airplane. It was supposed to be simple, right? I buy an RC airplane off the shelf, go put a camera on it, fly it. Anyone can do it. <laughs> so nature is a cruel instructor, and she punishes hubris most harshly. Uh, so cue the music again. Build new body, and back, and forward, and back. And then I start thinking, maybe I'm not really good at this. I can't watch a camera, fly a plane, pay attention to someone next to me. And if I can't do this sitting in the middle of a public park in calm conditions, how could I ever hope to give this to a firefighter or to EMTs or do anything with it? I need to take the load off of me. Um, went online. Started simple. Had small, I mean, many of you have heard of the Arduino Development Board. Started plugging things in. Kind of went back here a couple times. Um, but finally, finally, I started going online, started finding there are other people just like me. Other people who are having the same problems, who are hitting the same issues. Um, but they weren't calling them foam planes. They weren't calling, they weren't in the RC groups. They were under the name drones, which I'd heard of them before, but it was always these big, giant, evil things that the government or someone else had. Um, and one of the biggest things before I go on, I should kind of explain, well, what's a drone? It's this kind of mysterious thing. It's got all this weird technology and all this weird science, and only really smart people can use them. Um, but if I'm completely honest with you, 90% of you have the makings of a drone in your pocket. Um, the same sensors that allow my screen to tilt. Uh, my same GPS, the exact same chip that tells me where I am. Um, the magnetometer inside that tells me I'm lost. This is where north is which doesn't help, but it lets me know. <laughs> you take these same sensors, and because of that phone revolution, you're now starting to see this revolution. This board I'm holding in my hand, for probably less than the cost of most of your textbooks, about $150. On board, can detect tilt, roll, mag uh, has a magnetometer to detect what direction it's facing, even has a pressure sensor to let you know how high you are. And with a cheap little GPS unit, I've got all that I need to automate anything. This board can be programmed. One day, I was flying planes. Next, I go through the forums, and these crazy engineers are flying these things with six, seven, eight rotors. This thing doesn't care. This is amazing. I can take any platform I want, give it a little bit of intelligence, and all of a sudden, I'm a mad scientist. I'm a drone user, ah, you know, my minions fly. <laughs> There's some hubris to be learned here, but still, well, I mean, this is cool, but what, what can you do with it? Why be excited? I mean, the planes have been around for forever, and the technology as far as drones, the concept's been around for a while, but only just now is it getting cheap enough that we can all do it. This is what I do with them. Actually, I build the ones that do this kind of stuff. Um, a very good friend of mine who's a photographer, Payne, just like, let's put a camera on it, let's put a camera on it. Um, and it does some gorgeous stuff. Um, but it's not the only thing you can do. And there are, million, there are a million and one ideas out there. I want to see what people can do with them. So we started this organization, NTDUG, North Texas Drone Users Group. Um, it's now part of the National Drone Users Group. Five countries 
and about 4,000 members in nine months. People are doing this. People want to do this. People have, each, each of them have an individual idea of what they want to see with this technology. The drone users groups all over the country are putting together classes. These people have never touched RC aircraft before. This is their first time. The gentleman in that photo at the very end, Don Young, retired engineer, loves hunting for meteorites, carries around this 80 pound magnetometer to help find them. He can't do it. The will is there, but the body, it's, it's failing. All of a sudden now he has technology to take that same magnetometer, put it onto a helicopter, and now it flies in grid patterns for him. That's re-enabling for him. And that story repeats again and again and again. Anyone can do it. It's cheap. It's inexpensive. There are groups out there getting together. This is a do-it-yourself search and rescue group that came together and decided, hey, I really want to help and look for people if they're lost. Why can't I? Eight teams came together. One of them from UTA, actually, from your guys' UAV labs. They went out. They self-coordinated. They broke up into teams. Um, missing persons were placed out, body parts, tents. A uh, whole scenario was given up, and the teams competed hard. Each one of them picking up new skills, learning to work together. This is just one facet of this, and I just see so much energy behind it. I want you guys to know that this exists. I want you guys to go out there. If you have an idea, these things extend our reach. It doesn't just have to fly. This same board can be on any kind of ground rover. It can power underwater vehicle. Whatever you want to add intelligence to, you can now. And there are other people, I guarantee you, who are doing the same thing. So I'm just here to tell you about it. There's a national drone users group. Go onto the network, see if there's one local. If there's not, see if you want to start one. I bet you other people in your city want to. If you want to pick up one of these boards, there are many like it. There's a community of people behind this board of about 40,000 people at DOI Drones. I guarantee you, if you've had an error, they've probably hit it too. And then finally, go to your local makerspaces. I am proud to be a member of the Dallas Makerspace. I also happen to run the Aerospace Committee, so I'm kind of tooting my own horn here. Um, one final thing. If you can't think of an idea, a cost, there are people out there looking for people. Conservationdrones.org. You may have heard of it from previous talk. They're using these unmanned systems, less than the cost of a medium-sized laptop. And now they're able to control illegal logging, track animal movements. There's an organization out in Alaska called Skywatch. They use these things to keep an eye on environmental disasters, on pit mining, making sure, checking for violations. People are, people are taking the tools and applying the things they most care about. But here's a little extra incentive. The National Drone Users Group Movement has come out with the Drone Social Innovation Award. Up to the end of July, you build a drone under $3,000, film it, a little 10 minute video, a little, excuse me, three minute video, showing what you did, why it matters, and what you changed in the world. You make the biggest social impact with your drone, $10,000 for you. Here are the resources I was talking about. You can go up here, NT Doug, National Drone Users Group Movement, and DIYDrones.com, and Dallas Makerspace if you'd like to visit a local makerspace. Now, if you don't mind, time is short, and I really want to fly. <laughs> now, here's one of the fun things when you're in front of a live audience is you have to do a technical demo. So let's hope this girl listens. If I built her right, she should. Come here, babe. So, normally, I have GPS. They built this building a little too well, so I can't exactly do a lot of the demos I have. Um, outdoors, with a GPS lock, I could actually grab her by her leg and drag her across a parking lot. And the entire time, she would fight me. As soon as I let her go, she'd come home. Now, I'm in a tight area, so the wind's pushing her around. But even without control, She's happy as can be, and that's without any GPS lock, just, just a little bit of drift from the air currents. Imagine what I could do if I had that much carbon fiber. <laughs> but as impressive as this is, and it's pretty cool,
she's just a bus. She doesn't have anything on her. She's intelligent enough to listen to my remote because I don't have my computer on for me. This is for you. You want to do research. You want to carry. You want to see something over you know, 10 feet above you. Do it. Imagine your application, your dream. Take it to the sky. It's out there for you. It's not even expensive. Thank you very much. Thank you.